Yes. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about, I know one time you went to California for an event, and then you made a long road trip home. So I think you, tell us a little bit about that trip. Where, where'd you go, and uh, were you by yourself when you did that? Oh, no, yeah. That was uh, my cousin, Justin. Justin's yep. uh, Justin's wedding. Um, it was south of San Francisco. So his brother um, and his brother's wife, Michael and Brandy, they rode, we all road trip together out there. And we drove through something like, I mean, the whole round trip, we drove through like six or eight national parks. I mean, it was insane how much countryside we got to see, but we're also trying to get there speedy, you know, to see this wedding. And uh, so we drove up through the Rockies and that one day I remember it was like 85 degrees because it was summer. It was like June, I think. And it was like 85, 90 degrees. We're driving my car through Nebraska. And then we literally got to the top of the Rockies and there's snow on the ground. And it's literally was snowing at one point. And it, I'm running around chasing a moose in shorts with my camera. And I just know that people <laughs> in other cars are just like laughing, like, what is this kid doing? Like, just ridiculous. But, but yeah, we covered a ton, half the country driving out there. I stopped everywhere to get pictures all the time because I was the one driving. So I was in control. And then what happened um, was we <laughs> went to the wedding, everything else. And then driving home the day before we drove home, Michael is just like yeah i think brandy and i are going to fly back and i didn't even it's like okay cool i didn't even dawn on me but later i've kind of realized over the years that we like we talked about earlier when i take an hour to frame up a photo that's not always fun for the person who's with me and it's also not yeah. fun when you're facing a <laughs> road trip back home to nebraska from california that's going to take you know a few days and they're in a hurry to get home you know and so it was, it was kind of funny, but I think that, you know, I've taken a ton of people out taking photos with me, and I think a lot of them can relate. You're a patient guy, Trev, so I feel like you're, you've always been pretty good with it when we went out shooting, but I think that a lot of my friends will probably laugh hearing this because they'll be like, they'll look in the mirror like, yep, yep, I know exactly what he's talking about. Yep, it does get yeah. annoying. I, I don't know if I would say I get annoyed, but I mentally – go into taking photos with you that like it's a 12 hour thing and I don't have an expectation of when I going to get home. And I have to tell Alex, <laughs> like this is all night. I might be home at midnight. I might be home at two in the morning. I mean, if we leave some, sometimes you want to leave first thing in the morning. And then I, I know we'll probably be home in the evening. Cause it's like 12 hours is pretty much max, but I don't ever have any expectations about, where we're going to park, what we're going to look at, when we get out to take photos, how long we're going to stand there. But there are times where I'm just watching you and I'm just like, we've been sitting in this one spot, like focusing <laughs> on this tree for like an hour. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, we're just having small talk. But there are times where I'm like, OK, like, you know, but I try not to say that because I am having fun and I don't want to mess up the mood or anything. But well, if Michael you know, and Brandy that are. I don't know what, like, did you give them a heads up on the drive out there that you were going to stop? Oh, no. no, cause then they might not <laughs> came. <laughs> did you, you didn't think anything of it when they were like, Hey, I'm going to fly back. No, nah, nah, I you... mean it, it pretty quickly, you know, with that much windshield time, you have time to reflect. And when I was by myself for, you know, 1500 miles driving back home, it dawned on me that perhaps they decided to fly back because they were annoyed with the amount of photos I took coming out here. It probably they cost were. them 500 bucks. It probably did. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, we will spend this $500 rather than ride back. But you made it like a three day thing, right? Oh yeah. You drive home. Yeah, it I was mean, three days. It was it was three or four, yeah, for me. Um I went through were, uh were you sleeping in like, your car? Arizona and Utah. Um no, I stayed in hotels. But yeah, okay. I went through like Zion and Canyonlands and um, you know, all those cool, cool places, the desert sort of places that I always thought about. Those were on my bucket list go back to do like star photography and stuff like that. But I mean, those but, are yeah. epic national parks. I, I think it's so yeah. cool that you like doing that. So, and you did Yosemite, 
right? When you were out there, mm-hmm. or was that on was that yep. on the way there? That was on the way back, and I only got to be there for like a few hours on the drive back. But it was immediately it became like because that's where Ansel Adams did all his photography. You know, Ansel Adams he did black and white photography. He spent a very the greater majority of his career was spent doing black and white landscape photography at Yosemite. Um, and that's something that, you know, everyone knows who Ansel Adams is. And um, that's something that driving through there, I was just like trying to envision what that must be like. And black and white photography is so challenging. You would think that it's, it's another thing that's counterintuitive. All photography is counterintuitive, but like you think, okay, if it's black and white, it's gotta be easier. No, it's way harder. You need the right amount of contrast and you need, it's, it's something that I play with all the time, but I am, I wouldn't even consider myself much more than average at it, like novice to average, because it is, it's incredibly difficult to, sometimes a photo becomes more powerful when you take out color. And uh, other times it becomes less powerful when you take out color and it's, you just kind of have to see it through in way different eyes. And it's something that I am obviously struggling to really put words to. Um, but he was the do all die all best black and white landscape photographer that's ever lived. And that was where he was shooting. So driving through there, you kind of get that feel like that kind of chill down your back of your neck. Like, Oh my God, this is like literally where Ansel Adams was out here shooting photos. Okay, is that all post production or is that a setting on your camera when you're hitting the button? Ansel Adams, that was all straight out of the camera. Those were back in back when what came out in the dark room when you developed your film, that was your photo. Um really it was not post production, yeah. Photography used to be way harder, man. Like photography was way, way harder back in the day before the digital cameras. You know, when it was film cameras, you got one shot and you didn't know what it was gonna look like till you know, you got home and you developed your own film and everyone who was a photographer also developed their own film and had their own dark room. And that was like, if you're a photographer, you're also very well skilled in developing your own film. And um, you would shoot with certain types of film. I do not know this well enough to talk about it confidently, but there's different types of film you would buy, like blue. Uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. There's there's different types of film that you would buy before you even went out, knowing that this will capture my black and white images that I think I'll run into in Yosemite with the right sort of contrast and the right color. Um, and, and it was just such a harder, it was way more difficult. I mean, I feel like photography is incredibly difficult now. I can't imagine what it was like where you don't even know how your photos are going to look until you get home and look at them and they're developed. And then there's no post-production. There's no like re-editing on Lightroom or anything like that. It's like what came out is what the photo is that you got, you know? Meanwhile, I'm here taking photos in these national parks and I'm looking at my viewfinder and I can literally scroll through the photos I've taken on my camera in real time. Like, Oh my God, that's going to be a good photo when I get home and look at it, you know? And that's not, that's not what those old school photographers had by any means. 